slash MTN. How's it going, everybody, and welcome to episode 250 of the Shin Megami Tensei Network podcast. So, as some of you may be aware, this is not going to be a regular podcast episode. For starters, uh, I'm recording this by myself, so it is not a normal solo podcast. This is actually me going to be announcing all of the winners for the Atlas Awards for 2021. Thousands of you, very surprisingly, actually ended up participating in our poll. I cannot thank you all enough for participating. And I just kind of thought this would be a fun way of reflecting back on the community because we've had three pretty big Atlas releases this year with Strikers, Nocturne HD, and of course, SMT5. So I made a bunch of different categories. I asked as many of my friends to help me read out the winners as possible. This episode is probably going to be a little bit on the shorter side, but kind of thought it would be fun, get a little bit of pomp and circumstance, and just sort of talk about each of the games, get the awards, and end things off by kind of hearing what you, the public, think, anonymously, of course, about Atlas in 2021. So, without further ado, let's start with our first award. All right, and of course, not actually keeping with tradition of award shows, we are going to be starting with the biggest one of all, or at least probably to most people out there, with Game of the Year. So, obviously, the nominee, like I said before, and prepare to hear these three game titles a whole heck of a lot over the next however long this award show is, is Persona 5 Strikers, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster, and Shin Megami Tensei 5. And the winner is, by an insane majority, with over 85% of the votes, was Shin Megami Tensei 5, with second place being Persona 5 Strikers, and taking up a very measly 2.9% of the votes, Nocturne HD Remastered. So congratulations to SMT5 for taking Game of the Year. Now, next up, we have a Best Story. So, out of Strikers, Nocturne HD, and SMT5, this was an incredibly, incredibly close category. So, in third place, Best Story went to SMT3. Nocturne took 25% of the votes. Strikers took 33% of the votes. And with over 40% of the votes, the winner is Shin Megami Tensei 5. So, very big kind of surprised there in terms of how close all three of those could have been literally the entire voting process that number kept changing of like first it was nocturne then it was strikers and then eventually it ended up being smt5 so congratulations to smt5 in terms of winning best story now next up this category is going to be read off to by my good friend mac so without further ado please take it away mac thank you spencer for having me i am maka and i am here to announce the award for best gameplay the nominees are Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne HD Remaster, Persona 5 Strikers, and Shin Megami Tensei 5. And the winner is... Shin Megami Tensei 5. Also, congratulations to Akira Kanoe for winning Best Persona 5 Strikers Boss Fight. All right, thank you so much, Mac. I really appreciate you kind of being our first guest announcer here. And to give a little bit of insight in terms of the best gameplay for that one, this was another one that just really, really stole the show. So third place was Nocturne HD with 3%, 3.3%, just to be really, really on the nose. And Persona 5 Strikers was the second place winner at 15.9% of the votes, and at over 80% of the votes for best gameplay was SMT5. So really, really strong winner there. And for best boss fight, this was of course a write-in answer, so there was no set answer. We had hundreds and hundreds of people write in their own choices. This was really, really close, and I was really, really pleasantly surprised that Akira won, just because, at least for me, that as someone who recently played through that boss fight, is so strong, so fun, great music. Uh, cannot give enough props to that boss fight, just being a really, really fun experience. So, 
Next up for our awards, we're going to have another guest announcer. This one is going to be Kuro from the Midnight Channel. So, without further ado, take it away. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Kuro with the Midnight Channel. And uh, thank you so much, Spencer, for inviting me tonight. I guess I have to talk about this uh, category here for the awards. Best visuals, uh, which is between Nocturne, uh, Persona 5 Strikers, and Shin Megami Tensei 5. And the winner is Shin Megami Tensei 5. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Kuro. So yes, best visuals, unsurprisingly, going SMT back to back to back to back. Without probably too much surprise, best visuals went to SMT5. And what was more surprising about this was, again, this was just another absolutely destroyed category in terms of votes where it was over 75% of the votes went to SMT5, second place was for Strikers with 23% of the votes, and 1.7% went to Nocturne HD. Okay, now time for our next category. Presenting this one will be Gab, otherwise known as GabMew by some of you on there. So without further ado, take it away. Hello everyone, it's GabMew here from my channel, of course, here to announce the award for the Best Atlas Developer. The nominees consist of Atlas Japan, Omega Force, Imagine of Technology Land, and the winner was, of course, Atlas Japan. Congratulations! All right, thank you, Gab, once again for all the help. So yeah, our next winner was Atlas Japan for developing SMT5. Not that surprising. This one again totally, totally stole the show. Although most people may not have known, Imaginative Technology Land and even developed Nocturne HD. Probably people knew about Omega Force doing Strikers, but SMT5 just absolutely stole the show again with this one. This was a 90. 1% voting average, 8% for Strikers, and 1% for ITL. But once again, great work by all the development teams out there. Really, really great job. And our next award is thankfully not going to have SMT5 as an answer, so do not worry. This is not just going to be us giving Atlas Japan and SMT5 all the awards, I promise. Next award is going to be presented by my good friend Waffles. So without further ado... Hey everyone, this is Waffles, and I'm here to uh, tell you who the winner of Best Demon was, and that would be Alice. Alice is the winner, Best Demon. Pretty good taste. See ya. Alright, yeah, congratulations to Alice. So not only did that count as Best Demon, but that was also Best Persona, just because Strikers kind of muddies the water, but hopefully the message gets across. I just want to give a couple of shoutouts. This was another write-in-only category, and this one, going through all the hundreds and hundreds of replies from you guys, was absolutely crazy. So I have to give a shout-out, because some of these were really surprising. Jack Frost... Um, I think was like second or third place. Jack Frost got a, a couple hundred votes. That was really, really surprising. As well as iDune. iDune was really, really close. I think iDune actually was second place. iDune got more than Jack Frost. It was really, really close with Alice. And the other one I have to give a huge shout out to because there were just times where it was just nothing but Kansu, 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 Kansu. So, uh, Kansu, a lot of love out there. I'm glad I'm not the only one uh, who's a big fan of our new Egyptian friend. And yeah, without further ado, next category, but yeah, congrats to Alice. The uh, the Alice stands out there will never stand down. Hi there, I'm Aileen, also known as the Twitch streamer Duke Black, and I'll be presenting the awards for Best Voice Acting Cast, and your nominees are Persona 5 Strikers, Shin Megami Tensei 5, Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nocturne HD Remaster, and the winner is Persona 5 Strikers, and the winner for best boss fight in Shin Megami Tensei 5 is Shiva. All right, thank you so much, May, for reading off those two categories. Something I want to kind of give a little bit of an interesting shout out to in terms of the detail for this was boss fight was really close for SMT5. Like, there was no clear winner. I really had to just go through all of the answers on that one. And what was really surprising was there were more votes actually for best boss fight in SMT5 than even Nocturne HD or Strikers, which is kind of interesting considering it's a newer game, but the answers were all over the place from Demi Fiend to Nua to Yakumo, Kansu, and all these other things like that. So the fact that a optional kind of super boss one was really, really interesting. So yeah, big shout outs to Shiva for sure. And the other one that I had to really give an extra shout out to was this was so close. 
for best voice cast between the two clear kind of, I think, winners. So, first off, really big shout out to all the voice cast in all three games, Strikers, Nocturne HD, and SMT5. Uh, extra big shout out as well to Cup of Tea, who worked on both SMT games this year, and PCB Productions, who did Strikers. So, Strikers won with less than 2% of the winner. So, Strikers had 45%, and SMT5 was barely a little under 44%, and Nocturne HD took 11% of the votes. But yeah, really, really surprising how close that was the entire time, and just barely, barely inched out by Strikers. So, clearly, a lot of diehard Persona 5 fans out there with that voice cast and stuff like that, but really, kind of gives me a lot of uh, optimism as well that a new cast with five could still get so close in that race. So congrats to all the winners there. Now, our next category is going to be read off by me. This is for Best Original Soundtrack. So obviously the nominees are Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster. That came in at 9% in third place. In second was Persona 5 Strikers at 34%. And with over 55% of the votes, unsurprisingly, probably. Although, you know what? There, there, there's a tough competition there between Strikers and 5. They're just doing two very different things. SMT5 won with 55% of the votes. So, congratulations to all of the sound teams on those. Every one of those games has an amazing, amazing soundtrack. And keeping with that tradition there, we had a separate category for best song. This was a write-in answer. You could write in any track name you wanted from all three of these games. And much like with Best Demon in Persona, this was extremely, extremely hard to find a winner. Had to go through, double-check everything. Obviously, some people might spell names differently, things like that. But surprisingly, I, I thought for sure this would be the one category Strikers really wanted out for. And Counter-Strike was really, really close. Daredevil was really, really close. But at the end of the day, Battle Theme 6 from SMT5 ended up winning out, which, again, all these games have such great soundtracks, but was just such a fun, pleasant surprise. And again, there's no, there's no loser here. These are all great, great soundtracks with great track listings. So congrats to all the winners there for sure. All right, our next three categories are very much up my alley, so did have to steal this one. This was a very massive category. This was Best Performance for Persona 5 Strikers, and then Nocturne HD and SMT5. These were all separate categories with the entire main voice cast listed for nominees here, so we have a lot of numbers to kind of go into, but I'm not going to read off the entire list because we might be here all day, but let's start off with Persona 5 Strikers. And the winner is Tom Taylorson, who played Zinkichi, otherwise known as Wolf. So congrats, Tom, for not only being a part of the Phantom Thieves, making this your debut game, but you won with over 20% of the votes. In second place was Max Middleman for Ryuji, and in third place was very, very close. It was kind of there's a three-way third-place tie of Joker, played by Xander Mobus, Zack, who played Ango Natsume, and Megan Taylor Harvey, who played Sophia. So three third place winners, Ryuji in second place for Max and Tom stealing the show as Wolf in this debut performance. So congratulations, Tom. Great performance by everybody, but really, really happy to kind of see this new character resonate with the fans so much. So time for the new voice cast, though. So next up, we have best performance in Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster. And the winner is Robbie Damon for Isamu Nita. Isamu won with 17% of the votes. And another situation of second place was not too far behind was Ruben Langdon, who played Dante from the Devil May Cry series, with 14%. And another third place three-way tie by Paul Eating's performance of Lucifer. Kristen Lamonta as Demi Fiend and Ray Chase as Goto, all tied for third place. So big shout outs to all the nominees and all the winners there, especially because this was a game that had never had voice acting before. Nice to kind of see the race was so tightly knit with everybody. There was no real one kind of clear winner after you went from first place. 
And finally, we have Best Performance in Shin Megami Tensei 5. This one, another one with a huge voice cast, tons of people, great performances, but was really, really, really tight and close for the entire time here. So the winner is, in first place, Damon Mills for their performance of Algami. Second place was Casey Mongolio, who I probably butchered your last name, and I'm very sorry if you ever hear this, Casey, but you got second place with 20 0.6% for your performance of the protagonist slash Nahabino. And in third place was Ryan Colt Levi for his performance of Kansu. So shout out again to the entire voice cast. So many, so many great picks and everything. And it was so kind of interesting watching. There was really no clear winner for the longest time. And I, I just love watching this kind of because everyone's sort of favorite voice actor always changes so many times, especially through the voting process in the beginning compared to all the way at the end. So, once again, all three games, great voice cast, great production companies, great job by all the actors in there. Couldn't be more happy with everybody's performance. So, thank you, and on to our next category, we have another guest presenter. Here is Crow again from the Midnight Channel. How's it going, everybody? I hope everybody's having a wonderful night. This is Kudo with my channel. And uh, we have another category here to talk about, and that is the best jail in Persona 5 Strikers. And the winner is the Shibuya Jail. All right, thank you so much, Kuro, for reading off the nominees and winner there. So yeah, the best jail was kind of an interesting one of... There wasn't ever a really easy kind of choice to pick up for comparing all the dungeons or all the levels and all the games separately just because of the way Nocturne and especially 5 is laid out but I thought with Strikers just because of how segmented and different all the levels were it would be really interesting to kind of read off in terms of which one really resonated with people the most and I'm not sure if this was just because of how good and whatever the opening was in terms of how strong it was but very very surprising to see that the Shibuya Jail was the one that won first uh, there's not too too many uh, kind of surprises here in second place we had the Kyoto Jail, Osaka Jail was next, followed by a spoiler if you have not beaten the game, and the rest of the level. So, congrats to the Shibuya Jail, I will be wondering how I mail you your reward in the mail, but I'm glad you could be a winner nonetheless. And next up for our final guest announcer is a very special guest, who I will let do the introducing for themselves, and our final guest of the evening before I read off the last of the awards. So, without further ado, take it away, final mystery guest. Hello, this is Grimsdale Gaming. Today, I've been asked by Spencer Presley to introduce and announce the winner of this category. What is the best place to play Atlas Games? The nominees were PC, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch. And to no one's surprise, not even mine, the Nintendo Switch was the winner. Thank you, Spencer, for the invitation. I appreciate it. And remember, everyone out there, stay shocked. Thank you, Grimsdale, for that absolutely shocking performance. And I will say, I know most people may not be that surprised, but I will at least say for myself, I was personally surprised to see that Nintendo Switch won 43% of the vote for best place to play, for favorite place to play Atlas games. So 43% was the Nintendo Switch. Second place was PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation 5. And in third place was the PC. PC was 24%, PlayStation was 31 so pretty close, but Switch definitely had that advantage there that I may have been surprised by, but everyone else may be laughing in the background and saying, of course, of course this was the one that won. So our last three categories are kind of interesting picks and not ones you will probably ever see in any other award show, but had to include them for myself, especially the final one. This first category is Most Anticipated Atlas Game, which is kind of interesting because we don't really have a clear title outside of one of them, and the one that we had a clear title for definitely was not the winner. So, category... So, the nominees for Most Anticipated Atlas Game is Project ReFantasy, the next Persona title, and the next Shin Megami Tensei title. And in third place was Project ReFantasy with 14% of the votes. The next Persona title was in second place with 39.3% of the votes. 
And finally, the next Shin Megami Tensei title won with a whopping 46.6% of the vote. Very, very interesting. I even think if, like, I put Ultimax there, I don't think it would have topped that. I think people's reception to SMT5 was so positive that now we're just kind of foaming at the mouth for the next game for it. So hopefully we don't have to wait too, too long. But with Atlas, you never really know. Speaking of things you'll never really know much about is our next category is Best Atlas DLC. Now, Atlas has quite the divided history in terms of DLC. So, for this one I made a little bit of an interesting addition. I added none of the above as a category. So, your nominees for Best Atlas DLC are Persona 5 Strikers, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster, Shin Megami Tensei 5, or none of the above. If you just don't like DLC. That's your way of voicing the opinion. And out of the hundreds of votes we got, surprisingly, none of the above won second place at 29.4%, beating out Strikers at 7% and Nocturne HD at 3%. And the winner with over 60% of the votes was Shin Megami Tensei 5, which, at least for me personally, I think is a great pick. This was Atlas definitely putting a better foot forward in terms of how they've done DLC in the past with actually putting a lot of a lot of work and effort into that DLC compared to the other the games. So congratulations once again to SMT5. There are not enough awards for us to give you today, but you at least won the one for DLC. And our final most Spencer category of the day had to have been Best Atlas Steelbook of 2021. This one, I've, I've got so many questions about how this happened. Our nominees were, for Best Steelbook, Persona 5 Strikers on the PlayStation 4, Persona 5 Strikers on the Nintendo Switch, Shin Megami Tensei 5, the English slash European edition, or Shin Megami Tensei 5, the Japanese only GEO pre-order bonus Steelbook edition. And with hundreds of votes, I am very amazed at this one. The Japanese SMT5 Steelbook Edition won with a whopping 49%. Over 500 of you were apparently very invested in this Steelbook enough to vote for it that I had to ask, who voted for this besides me who owned it? Because I, I feel like the only one in the world who owns this thing, but I think it is very, very funny that Atlas West had three Steelbooks to win, and somehow Japan still beat them out. But either way, these are all great steel books. At the end of the day, they're all awesome to have in your collection. But what a what a strange I I, I would not have thought in a million years the the import one would have won. But uh, yeah, congratulations to GEO for. I, I wonder I wonder if when this award show comes out, if if they'll officially recognize that one of their pre order bonuses won an award. Like you, you think that's something you gotta say something about. But I've probably been wrong before. But without further ado. That is the awards. That was everything that you could kind of vote for without just kind of voicing your opinion. Thank you so much to all my friends for coming on and helping participate in this kind of different episode. I know 250 isn't a traditional milestone, and especially with the holidays, it was extremely difficult to kind of get everything lined up. So the fact that we got any kind of award show out for all of you, I hope you enjoy. Let me know what you thought about the winners online, whether it be on Twitter, on the YouTube comments, Facebook, Discord. All those links are in the comments below as per usual. Just thank you all so much for everything. And before I wrap us up, got to plug all of the normal spots that we do with any other podcast. So if you like this show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash smtn you can support us on the channel for a dollar a month and that will make you a smtn fan get the show normally early exclusive giveaways exclusive ways to let me know what the heck you think of the podcast we're putting out there or you can be a smtn executive producer at the five dollar and up level that gets you your name read at the end of every podcast every week just like the awesome jagingus cross ren ren dozy bear jazzy jefferson k horse lynn patrick disart Philip Meyer, Seashow, Solaire, and Cameron Sharp, Gorich Sio, and Robert Dogman Magadellis. Thank you all so much for being supporters. The Patreon support this year has been absolutely, absolutely awesome. If you want to help support the channel in a way that is not financial, you can always subscribe to YouTube. That growth has been really, really awesome as well. I cannot thank you all enough for it. So 
Big thank yous to everyone. Thank you, Atlas, for making these awesome games. Thank you to all the hardworking developers who worked on games. Even if you didn't win, or even if you were just nominated, I just want you to know I appreciate all of these games. I'm happy that they are in my life. And, uh, yeah, so we are going to end the podcast here. But as we wrap up the show, I'm going to scroll through. We had one final questionnaire. And this is, how would you describe or review Atlas in 2021? And I'm going to go and try and find some choice answers to see what everyone thinks. There were lots of goods, greats, pretty goods, amazing, 10 out of 10s, 7 out of 10s. But let's see whatever we find in terms of our choices here. Our first one comes by someone I may actually know. Says, thank you for providing Prime Minister Koshimizu. Really good. I enjoyed all the games they released this year. I hope the quality keeps staying pretty good. Very supportive of the Switch. I love it. More support. For the West, very, very strong. For Japan, it was kind of weaker since they only got SMT5. I am not a huge Atlas fan myself, yet this year was very meh for me. Strikers was disappointing. Haven't been able to play Nocturne HD, and SMT5 has been amazing so far, so it's been a mixed bag for me. Atlas has had a really good year overall. Very positive, 9 out of 10. Amazing, more SMT and Persona games. I only wish they updated the music in SMT3. Overall, I think they did a great job this year, except for Nocturne and Strikers on Switch. SMT5 is incredible, and I hope they release DDS on PC and Switch at some point. Bang your year, can't wait for next year. Atlas, 10 out of 10. No, 11 out of 10. Dead AF says someone, please remove Denuvo on P4G on Steam. Goated with the goat emoji. In terms of Atlas games, absolutely wonderful. There could be a few minor changes, but overall fantastic for arbitrary number scores. 10 out of 10. In terms of Atlas as a company, I think they were fine. A few questionable business tactics like Day 1 DLC, but even then, it wasn't the worst business model. I think overall, a solid publisher and developer, and I'm very excited to see what comes next. They did a great job this year with SMT5, my favorite year so far, and I have been playing Atlas games for a very long time. A very ambitious year for Atlas. They really saved the best for last, in my opinion. Nocturne was cool on modern platforms, but felt a little bit disappointing as a remaster. For Strikers, I never really got into it, mainly because of the gameplay. Not a huge fan of the type of gameplay. SMT5 does have some issues, but overall, I really enjoyed my time with it. Immaculate. I love you. <laughs> Amazing games. 8 Jack Bros out of 10 Jack Bros. Poggers year. Great overall. P5S was a great title. Surprised both P5 and P5R fans. Nocturne HD had its issues and features, but overall was pretty good. SMT5 disappointed me narratively, but aspects of it made up for it in terms of gameplay. Atlas did fumble a bit with how they started the 25th anniversary of Persona, but it's been one announcement so far and plenty of time to make up for it. I would like to describe Atlas 2021 as mostly Pog. Nocturne HD and SMT5 absolutely slapped. Nahabino plushie out of 10. Atlas, please consider doing more remasters. And yeah, I think that's just about it. Thank you, everybody. There are still hundreds of more responses out there, but kind of wanted to give some highlights out there that I saw that weren't just their normal pretty good, pretty bad, or whatever like that. So thanks for this kind of like 30-minute or so long award show. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below or online, as always. Atlas West, if you see this, please make yourself be heard. Uh, I'd like to have made this award show and someone at least uh, notify it or make it seem real in some sense. Atlas Japan, if you are even aware of all the awards you've won, that would also be pretty hilarious. So feel free to let us know on Twitter at SMT Network if you find us or this podcast in the comments below. Either way, have a good rest of your holidays. Have a good rest of your New Year's. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this, being a part of this community, and I hope you all have a great end of 2021 and look forward to 2022 even more so. Have a good one, everybody. Goodbye.